Hey guys, it's Issa Rack. Um, so sorry for the delay of the rewards this month. <clears throat> so uh, a lot of you requested, because I didn't do any personal work, it's been a busy month, um, a lot of you requested a, a really good uh, suggestion for the videos, which is form studies. Uh, all the basics of form studies, and not just that, how I do them. Uh, so the, the, the deal with form studies is that you have to be as efficient as possible. Uh, and someone mentioned how the cylinder is like the king of, of form studies or the king shape or the it is because it really dominates organic uh, objects so the organic layer on top of the geometric blocking stage so you block in you have edges and then what you do is you dress it up and start curving those edges so it actually looks like muscles and skin and something squishy and organic like a human body so that's where the cylinder would dominate and if you don't have a good cylinder in your vocabulary and your value travel vocabulary and the way that values travel and radial shading and the way values transition and when they stop even in fabric studies you have to know the cylinder so in that case I do argue yeah that the cylinder is the king of all shapes however the core shadow is hard to find um, and if you don't if you find that you're having a difficult time finding a core shadow the cylinder is like an advanced shape for you you need to stick to the cube which is where the cube would be king of all shapes uh, so the two main objects to learn how to render in this case, whereas a sphere is really, really easy in the, in the fact that it's really easy to find the core shadow for it, so a sphere, and every single form study you ever do, you ask the light source question, where's my light source? You see how I chose the background value, and I'm bringing the value down based off what I found in background value. That's how you keep all your values neighboring, by the way, and looking like they're coming out of the same environment. So that's my base value for this sphere. Light direction is the biggest question you ask. I'm just going to start with a pure white. See how white I am? It's not going to be that white when I'm painting with it because opacity goes all the way down for radial shading. Light source, let's say, is coming from the top right corner. First brush stroke, hardly visible. Second brush stroke. Third, fourth, fifth. My brush is shrinking. My press is getting lighter. This resulting core shadow, which starts here and here, see how it starts on a high point, is how we typically find a core shadow for a sphere, in that it's just radial shading and it rounds off perfectly if your brush size starting out is almost at the same size. A cylinder, and that's going to look really weird, a cylinder is an extension of this core shadow. Or actually let me rotate it so the light is from above so it's easier to explain is an extension okay and because it's an extension it kind of has less of a swell so it's not as bulbous so it's more flattened because it extended and so this core shadow here has more of a rectangular prism or a rectangular kind of pattern to it, especially if the light is top down, but it's still all stuff I did with my soft brush, and that's the airbrush technique that I'm talking about. Alright, so the cylinder will dominate every single aspect of your rendering stage, all your radial shading, whether you're climbing up or down, is going to be affected by your understanding of the cylinder. And if you guys want more videos like this, do let me know, I love these little videos as well, I always thought you guys maybe prioritized my process videos, but this is also really, really great in helping refresh your understanding of the fundamentals. Fundamentals and core shadows will haunt you forever. Um, there's no one professional that I've ever met without a core shadow problem. Always some kind of missing core shadow. Some of it is deliberate, some of it is laziness, some of it is a lack of understanding. Even I have, you know, of course as your teacher, you assume that I don't have any problems with core shadows. I do, and it's a problem-solving thing. Finding core shadows is problem-solving. You're given a situation, you're given shape on shape on shape, and you have to find the core shadow that unifies them all, considering each individual shape's geometric anatomy. That's complicated. That's abstract. Because it's hard to decide where these shapes are going to end up representing, what light source is working with them, the bounce light involved, how much of the core shadow is coming through. So for bounce light, bounce light is a question of the object's texture. If it's a shiny object, it'll have bounce light. If it's a non-shiny object, it won't have so much of a bounce light. It'll stay mattified, just like that. So matte means not shiny. Shiny is visible in the bounce light happening in the 
coarse shadow. You don't see bounce light in the highlighted areas because they've already been highlighted. They've already considered the bounce light potential. This background value can go all the way up this way, can go, can go all the way down this way as long as it's still neighboring. If you go down here, this is a completely different light environment. If you go up here, completely different light environment. There's so much wiggle room, only so much wiggle room that you have. I could actually go a little bit darker just to show off some more contour. So the cylinder, um, <clears throat> the, the idea of the cylinder, the reason why it's so important is because in three-quarter view it also helps you find uh, distortion or rotation or stacking. Stacking is one object in front of the other, so if you have a lip in three-quarter view, the lip tends to reveal its cylindrical base in three-quarter view. Right? So this is the lip in three-quarter view, Cupid's bow, Cupid's bow, Cupid's bow, and then corner, corner, corner usually hides behind the lip. So that's why a cylinder is important. The nose also reveals the cylindrical top side of the tip of the nose in three-quarter view. The chin also has a cylindrical touch to it. So I could say that there's a sphere for every one of these, but it's not because the volume is horizontal. You have eyes beside each other. If we had one eye, one nostril, and a cupid's bow, then I would say a sphere is the perfect shape to use for a human face. But we have two eyes, and a sphere is perfect for the eyeball because it's an actual organic ball. Um, but the nose, too wide, really. There's too much of a horizontal growth in our features for us to, to use only a sphere to theoretically break down what's happening in three-quarter view, what's happening in geometric anatomy. So the cylinder really is the king of all shapes when it comes to dressing your, uh, your, your blocking, which we all have done enough of. Um, now it's time to make our, our blocks humans when it comes to blending organic subjects. The cylinder guides you on when to start blending, when to cast the shadow. And the, and the point here of the casting the shadow, and it happens on the sphere as well, is imagine the light source. Here, let me get a better pencil brush. Imagine the light source is a camera. There's a camera attached to it, so let me draw the camera. Okay, and the camera has vision. This is the vision of the camera, the viewfinder, right? And this is the light source. And it's shining down on the object. Let me try to make it so the light source is pointing this way, that's better. Um, and there's a car. <laughs> and the car is traveling. Right now, what the camera can see for this car, car A, is the car is kind of right over here. Right? And this is the car, this is the wheels, this is the back of the car, and this is the trunk. These are the rear lights, tail lights, whatever. And this is the roof of the car. When the car disappears or starts to disappear or is gone completely is when the car is right here. That's when core shadows start because it's a really kindergarten way <laughs> of describing what happens theoretically with these light rays that carry light through this line, which is also coinciding with this edge. And the light keeps going in this direction and this direction, but never bends and tries to see what's on the other side. <clears throat> well, that's when coarse shadows start. So find the high point, and the high point can be anywhere. Not anywhere, though, in relation to the light. If you don't think about where is the light source, where, you don't have this question of reference in your mind. So you'll put shadows anywhere you like because right now there's no anchor to your theory. So the where is the light source question is asking the question of where is my high point in relation to the light source. So you can't just have one side of the equation. You have to have the other side as well. So where is the light source? That's the location of the core shadow. So if you're a type of student right now who doesn't know where the light source is, who doesn't ask that question habitually, you need to go back and do some form studies. Cubes. You are not advanced yet into muscle structures and organic blobs. You have to do some cubes. You can do them alongside each other. They do reflect each other. But do it with the knowledge of the light as a camera because then you'll be thinking about high points when the high point will start to hide the car <clears throat> and where it's hiding in relation to the camera on the light source. If the car, if the light source was right here, the car would start hiding of over here. Get it? 
if the, if the light source was over here, like where my mouse is. So you see, it's always a question of where the light source is. That's where core shadows develop. It's a no duh question, but it's 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 only duh when I put it into verbs and, and just and, and sentences and, and make a sentence out of it and just explain it verbally. But when I'm actually displaying it as a diagram, then you really assess, really do some self-reflection. Do you really think of this system right here? Did you remember that on an organic shape, there are million, for every milli inch, whatever it is, for every square millimeter of change of, of, of space, every new section has an independent arrow for itself. What does the arrow mean? The arrow means a new point of exposure, a new plane, a new surface, a new polygon. So because this area, an average, doesn't look in the same area as this, we have a different value for each if the light source is coming from this direction. And the light source coming from this direction can access this area better, even though it's not directly exposed, accesses this area better. This is a hot spot, and this is the area of shadow. The light isn't going to bend and, and oopsie, bend and then reveal this area. It just travels in straight lines. So it can access this area even though it's not a high spot. And a, and a better hot spot, and a better way to think about this is in, is in um, slices. So little slices. Every new latitude change you have a new level of exposure. And this is just for the sphere. A cylinder is that much more complicated because it grows horizontally or vertically however you're looking at it. And it's just more expected out of you technically. So you have your form knowledge which is your, your actual knowledge aspect. Then you have anatomy knowledge which is memory. So knowledge of forms, so form knowledge, then the memory of the anatomy, and then your patience and your threshold and all of that stuff, that extra bit of accessory problems we have to deal with because we're humans who are drawing, so we have human error, we have, uh, and which, is, which also affects our memory. Um, so all your knowledge and all of your tools happen in form studies. Memory is what you are dealing with when you're working without reference, and then you have reference, um, which again is affected by human error, whether or not you're seeing what you're supposed to be seeing, habits you're fighting, etc. So form knowledge, independent form knowledge in your lab environment, your memory of anatomy, and if you don't have that, you have your references. And all of that combined makes you understand when to use the cylinder, how to use it, how to apply it when you're looking at it this little um, uh, bit of highlight along with the terminator doesn't happen on a cube. So a lot of the next level stuff happens on a cylinder better than it happens on a, on a cube. Even subsurface scattering is, is a little bit more tricky um, and a little bit easier to find on cylindrical objects, objects that go on without sides versus objects that have edges and sides to them. So the single side, the excessive demand on your, you know, really good aim with your uh, radial shading, knowing how to decrease and feeling out your hand weight with your opacity, finding the right area of the core shadow, which is the end all question. I was telling my student earlier that when you say I know how to draw, you can also say I know where to find a core shadow. I know how to paint in a core shadow. Um, it's, it's synonymous. So when someone says to you, I know how to draw, they're also telling you, I can find core shadows. That's what it should mean. Some people say, I know how to draw, but they have no idea where a core shadow is. It's so easy to decide which side of a cube is going to be dark and which side is going to be light. Not maybe for a beginner, but for advanced students like yourselves, you may be able to actually um, uh, find it with your eyes closed. You, 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 you're probably perf perfectionists right now and masters at the cube in light. But when it comes to a, a form study, you forget instantly about the map, about the, the light rays, about the light source as this constant um, exposure of light, straight line ver uh, vectors of light source, as the light as the viewfinder for what's possible and not possible, what's visible and not visible, and it being a constant reflection of that light source's power or domination over the light environment. In, in the fact that you're finding the core shadow continuously through multiple objects in an open scene. So your assignment for this month is a 
closed room, just a really simple closed room, not an open room, with windows on all sides. Okay, so this is your assignment officially announced here. And what you're supposed to be doing is choosing a single light source, wherever direction it's coming from, and casting your, your light and your shadows, however that's going to be. Okay, so assessing this and then throwing in a big blob in the middle, considering bounce light, straight vectors, diffused light inside a closed room, dark cavities, that's all going to really, really like challenge you guys. Find, you're going to find yourselves at your limit um, when you're comparing what you do in an open scene versus a closed scene with a form study and how much bounce light really happens. The shape bounces on the walls. The walls bounce on the shape. Shadows are diffused. How dark are you going? How bright is it outside? Uh, what are the patterns on the windows, which are mandatory as well? So I want to see patterns, random patterns on the windows and see what how they are affecting uh, the shapes nearby or how they're casting the shape of the window on the walls nearby. Okay, uh, really, really complicated uh, assignment, but it's definitely going to be um, something that changes the way you think about interior light and the power of the cylinder when you're dressing uh, planes, when you're moving planes into their more advanced final form, which could be a finger or it could be a whole arm or a muscle structure or a face or a chin or whatever you're having trouble rotating in three quarter view, the cylinder is going to come back. It's not, I wish things stay as lines so we don't have to render them, but we are machines of, you know, we are, we are printers. We're printing what's happening with light without depending too much on reference. The way we do that is by memorizing the principles behind core shadows, behind casting shadows. Um, and in order for you to do that, you put yourself in these lab environments and that's the, that's the point of this month's homework. Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you guys for your patronage. I really can't thank you guys enough for letting me teach you and being here and supporting my channel. I'll see you guys next month. I cannot wait to see you guys' homework. Bye.